Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here, and today we're going to talk about yet another attempt to make uh, astrophotography portable and light and hikeable. Because that is my ultimate goal: is to have a hikeable astrophotography rig. And uh, you've seen me do a lot of effort for with the uh, AZ GTI mount um, that I put on an equatorial wedge. Uh, with a tripod and then a camera lens with the ASI 533MC Pro, all sorts of stuff. And that makes for a setup that is very portable, that fits in a small backpack. And you've seen me take this around Tokyo to Tokyo Tower and do a reverse astro trip uh, at Tokyo Tower. If you're interested in this video, I'll put a link above because it's a very silly video. And don't we like silly videos about astrophotography? So um, with, with that, but still, I am not really convinced uh, because I'm really wanting something that I can carry up a mountain. The reason is that I am in Japan and unlike the US or, or even Europe, where I can drive and you know, find a parking lot that has an amazing Bartle, Bartle zone, very dark area, like typically the best I can do uh, by driving and then just like parking somewhere um, is maybe a Bartle four, Bartle three if I'm super lucky, but it's like, like between three and four kind of thing. It's doable, but it's like, it means like climbing on, up Mount Fuji by car. I'm not even sure if it's even allowed this year. Um, and all sorts of like long drives. If I limit myself to one to two hours from home, it gets really dodgy in terms of, uh, of where I can get, where I can actually you know park my, park, park my car at a parking spot where I can just take the equipment out, use it. And even if I'm in a Bordel 3, it's extremely difficult to find places that do not have uh, lights, that don't have any stupid public lighting because Japan loves public lightning lighting uh, Japan loves uh, LEDs and it can be extremely annoying and so what this means to me is that I really want something that is lighter than what I have because when we think about it if I have like we can look at each of the pieces one by one from my AZ GTI setup so if we start at the base we have a tripod tripod is an important piece of the equipment and the tripod that I use is this beauty here, which is the Cytron Japan super expensive tripod. It is, it has the advantage of being very light. I'm um, not even sure how much it, it weighs, but it's probably around one kilogram. So it's not like super heavy, and, uh, but it is a bit uh, big. I have a smaller tripod that is very um, solid as well, but it is uh, much less fat on the edges and which is fine for uh, low focal lengths. And this one is, is heavier though, smaller but heavier. So there are trade-offs. So that's the tripod. We're already at at least one kilogram. On my small tripod, 1.6 kilograms. Let's say 1.6 kilograms because that way that tripod, I can also use it for normal photography because it comes with a nice ball head. Okay, so we have 1.6 kilogram. Now we put the wedge on top. The wedge from Skywatcher is roughly 0.8 kilograms. Okay, then we add the AZ GTI itself. The AZ GTI mount itself is roughly 1.2 kilograms. And what do we put on the AZ GTI? We put a counterweight bar with a counterweight. And for me, those two together, they weigh around two kilograms. Uh, what do we have next? We have uh, the dovetail and the dovetail rings that will basically be holding my, uh, my camera lens and my ASI 533MC Pro. And that's roughly 300 grams, so 0.3 kilograms. On top of that, um, what we have within those rings is we have the ASI 533MC Pro, that's roughly 0.5 kilograms. We have the Canon lens. If I'm looking at one of the smaller lenses that have a nice focal length, it's the 200 millimeters f2.8 lens. And that one is 0.8 kilograms. <laughs> It really starts to add up, doesn't it? Then we have the Astro Mechanics adapter with like a, a spacer, that kind of stuff. We can count that as maybe 200 grams. So 0 0.2 kilograms. And one thing to not forget is that to control all of that, I need something. I need a computer. Uh, so StellarMate maybe or a small PC, but let's say one kilogram, right? For the PC equipment, the control equipment. So what does that leave us with? 
Try to do the math in your head first, I didn't, <laughs> but it leaves us with 8.6 kilograms of equipment. It's very portable, it fits in a backpack, but when I think about the fact that I want to hike up mountains and I'm taking my tent with me, I'm taking uh, food, I'm taking uh, something to cook with, um, I'm taking my sleeping bag, all of that kind of stuff. I'm a pretty light hiker, so typically I manage to fit that in all of my equipment, including food and water, to within 12 kilograms and if you're adding eight kilograms uh, to that that's not gonna work okay so the first compromise that I could do is remove the counterweight and counterweight bar and you know with a cannon lens it's kind of like workable I've done it before it kind of works it's not ideal but it's doable so we removed two kilograms we're at 6.6 and I could also save some weight instead of using my 200 millimeter lens I could use a 50 millimeter lens and then you know we we remove maybe 600 grams and we had six kilos now. And maybe I could go with a smaller tripod as well, lighter tripod, and that will actually probably be some kind of an issue. But let's say that I go with the smaller tripod and that uh, makes the tripod like uh, less heavy. We can remove maybe 600 grams to one kilogram and we're maybe at five to 5.4 kilograms of equipment left. It's still five to 5.4 kilograms of equipment and we've done quite a large sacrifice. And this is something that we kind of forget when we build uh, uh, you know, our portable equipment is that the weight adds up extremely quickly which means that you know the AZ GTI is one example but even if I were to use a sky tracker like the sky guider pro or the Vixen Polarier or um, the star adventure or the whatever they call the, the miniature version of the star adventure well there's still the wedge there might be counterweights there's still stuff on top and it gets quite heavy on top of that uh, i still want to take a normal camera with me so that will be like 400 500 grams on, on top of everything for my normal camera needs a lot of uh, equipment and it's not something that i can go hiking and hiking is for me the only way that i can really get to those dark juicy zones in japan Plus it's fun, like, you know, you, you're going up the mountain, you're camping there and you're looking, you're, you're floating in stars. It's absolutely amazing, even in Japan. And I, am, I absolutely love that feeling. And I just don't want to be uh, weighted, down, weighed down by so much equipment on me. So that's where I'm kind of coming from. So then I actually heard, um, I had heard a long time ago about something called the Pentax Astro Tracer. There was something that was possible with Pentax cameras and a GPS and compass module, uh, as well as inclinometer or whatever we call that module. An Astro Tracer is basically a way within the camera to use the in-body stabilization, which basically moves the sensor to try to compensate for any hand movement while taking pictures. Instead of compensating for hand movements, the sensor will move to keep track of the stars, the night sky, which is completely crazy when you think about it. How does that you know, even work? It makes no sense whatsoever, but it's actually possible. Now the Astro Tracer on paper is an awesome idea because that means you can track stars with only a camera. You don't need a star tracker. At the same time, it's a terrible idea because it, it introduces tilt. And we know that tilt is the enemy, is one of the enemies, one of the many enemies in this hobby. Um, on top of that, it will be able to track for up to five minutes, but really it's up to one, two minutes. Um, and, uh, but still it will not like, you know, the sensor will not magically go like beyond the lens and just travel through the camera body. Uh, you still need to basically re-put the subject of, um, of your picture within the center of the frame. So there are tons of disadvantages, but then it gets much lighter in terms of equipment. And I found a deal on uh, a second-hand kind of site that had a Pentax K1 full-frame camera along with um, a Sigma uh, 85 millimeter uh, f1.4 lens that was ridiculously cheap. Um, and I just jumped on the occasion because that particular camera has the GPS, the compass and the inclinometer within the camera body. And this is how it looks like. And this is the camera body. It's fairly large. It's fairly heavy. Um, there are non full frame cameras that can do the same. There is the K3-2 from Pentax that also has the 
uh, GPS within the camera, but there is no tilt tilt screen. And for astrophotography, you really want a tilt screen to see what you're doing when you're doing the focusing and the camera is at an angle like that. Um, the other cameras as well, like the K70 from Pentax as well, APS-C format, uh, has a better, even better flip screen. It's not just tilt, but flip screen. And um, that one, uh, you can add a GPS module within the hot shoe and it's supposed to work ex excellently, but the problem is that the K70 is very, very well known for the uh, soli solenoid of death issue, which means that th there is a bit of a mechanism to control the aperture of lenses that's uh, somewhere in, in here. Um, it's actually under, on, the, on this side of the camera here. And um, it breaks. Uh, the K1 doesn't have this issue, so I wanted to make sure that I, I didn't, uh, I had something that was durable and that I could trust. And I heard extremely good reviews of the K1 with Astro Tracer. Now, of course, you know, um, this is a bad idea because tilt, because recentering, it's absolutely not lazy. And when I asked about this, I got a lot of advice about not getting it. And I absolutely did not follow the advice, I followed my heart. Um, to actually get this uh, this thing. Um, so that's the camera, but of course with the camera you do need a lens. So there's quite a few lenses that I can use. And the one lens that I want to take like on a, on a first try, first trip, would be something like this one, which is a super cheap. It's basically the Nifty 50 of the Pentax system, except that it's 35 millimeter. It's a 35 millimeter f2.4 lens, uh, which is supposed to be pretty neat. Uh, and that's super light, maybe around 100 grams. But of course, I could go super wide field, like with this uh, Samyang 14 millimeter lens. Or I could go for a bit more zoom with this ridiculously cheap, I think I paid $10 for it. Uh, it's a 30 year old lens, 200 millimeters uh, f4, but it has actually shockingly decent quality um, at even at f4. So this is something and it weighs maybe 400 grams. So this kind of stuff gives me a lot of options. And on top of that, the camera when I bought it, it also came with this um, uh, camera battery grip, I guess, which includes an additional battery. Of course, I can just like remove that additional camera uh, battery and, and manually change the battery that works too. But that means that I could uh, make sure that I have enough battery to last me the whole night while I am imaging away. Um, so it's a very neat, very portable system, and I really want to see how well it's going to perform. Now, if we look at the weight, with the very, the, the very lightest uh, system that I can have, we'll have the camera itself, which is one kilogram. We'll have the lens. We can start with 35 millimeter lens, um, which would be 100 grams. So we're basically at 1.1 kilogram. And then we have the tripod and I can make do with a smaller, lighter tripod because I don't have a huge amount of weight on top of everything. And uh, that would add only one kilogram. So we are at 2.1 kilograms for the smallest possible um, weight. And that is very, very doable. Plus it is the camera that I can actually use while I'm hiking to take pictures. 35 millimeter is a great focal length for standard photography or well, not great for landscapes, but it's workable. And um, that, that means that I can really, you know, uh, take this and use that as a multi-purpose camera, of course. There's the disadvantages that I mentioned, but also uh, the uh, there is the filter that will block a lot of the H alpha signal for for ne from nebulae. So it's really like nice for Milky Way photography, for large galaxy photography, that kind of stuff. And this is what I am going to try uh, this camera with. And of course, depending on how much space, how much weight I have left to me, I can you know bring the 200 millimeter lens on top of that. I can bring uh, the super wide field lens on top of that. You know, I can bring uh, one of the lenses that came with the camera, the, the 85 millimeters lens f1.4 on top of that. There's really tons of possibilities. And even with all of those lenses that I just showed you, plus the battery, battery grip, I would still be at just 4.4 uh, kilograms or so, maybe even a bit less. So much more capabilities but I need to babysit the equipment and I have to rely on this sensor tilt kind of technology. How will it, will it work? I do not know. Um, so I did an initial test uh, while we had like 
partly cloudy skies, like really clouds all over the place, but we could actually see some stars through the clouds. And it worked amazingly. I was able to get 30 second exposures at uh, 200 millimeters with pinpoint stars, which is really good news. And at 24 millimeters, I didn't even try to go too long because the sky glow is horrible here, but it means that there is a lot of potential. Plus, I could also use this camera if I wanted to with a, sky tra a star tracker as well in the future. So this is a decent solution. And I'll make sure that when I do my first trip this, with this camera, I will you know, film all of that and this will be the topic of a video. Um, and it does beg the question in the end that if this little setup there works, then what is my AZ GTI setup for? And it's a very good question and one a question that I don't really have the answer with because I already have a fairly portable setup that's like airline portable and um, transportable by car, which is my uh, AZ EQ5 which is very light and quite portable. And on top of that, I can use with the AZ EQ5, I can use this light tripod. And with the AZ EQ5, I can use my um, uh, Sharpstar 61 EDPH. So lots of possibilities that are there that are kind of making my smaller system a bit redundant. So I will need to test the Astro Tracer quite a bit before I commit to anything, but it might be that I <laughs> spent a lot of time building this AZ GTI setup that I might just end up reselling um, as a tuned up system. Who knows? I'll see uh, what I end up doing, but this is just like a quick video to show like kind of like the thought process, what's going on um, and how, you know, weight adds up so quickly in this hobby, it's really hard. And so I finally understand kind of like the, um, the appeal of the, this all-in-one system that's really a DSLR. And when you have a DSLR with an integrated star tracker, things get crazy because you can really do that with the camera body. You don't need to do much of anything, which I think is amazing. So this is an avenue that I really want to pursue, that I want to analyze, and we'll make sure to cover that in follow-up videos. Um, little weather update as well. In Tokyo, it's been raining and cloudy and raining for maybe a month now. Um, so it's yeah it's been hard so um, i'm still waiting for clear skies there's a typhoon going through right now <sighs> i'm getting really really tired of all of that and i want clear skies so i'll make sure to also show a quick tutorial on how to use this camera for astro tracer because it is quite amazing you really calibrate it it will take the gps position, it will calibrate the compass, it will calibrate the inclinometer. And then, you know, you don't need to pull a line, you don't need to do anything, you just plop it on the tripod, point it somewhere, and it will know how to track the stars in the direct direction that you have pointed, which I think is awesome. And uh, we'll see together how this is done. And we'll see what the results that this gives uh, are. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to this channel, uh, this is a channel about astrophotography and astronomy in general, tons of very technical videos, as well as more like equipment related videos. It's kind of a vlog at times, uh, a teaching channel, processing tips, that kind of stuff. At other times, tons of videos available. Feel free to check my all other videos and also feel free if you like this kind of content to go down below, click that subscribe button, uh, click the notification bell so that you're notified when a new video comes out. And you know, as always, feel free to go down, uh, leave a comment down below about any suggestion, criticism, anything you want to let me know. And you know, leave a like as well. It's super helpful to the channel. And with that, again, thank you so much for watching. Whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.